Well, good morning. I'm on a new venue today. Um, it's a venue that I've never fished before and it's so close to me, it's unbelievable. So, it's part of a seasonal ticket. You can also day fish it, but I'm gonna spend a lot of time here um, over the year. There's no 30s as of yet to come out of here. There's no known 30s in here, but there's a fair few 20s and I think it's an ideal lake for me to just come down. I mean, it's so close to me. I can spend so much time on this water. And for that reason, I'm not gonna be mentioning the name of the lake because there's some people down here that have fished here for 10, 15, 20 years. And I don't wanna come down here as a new person, advertise it all over YouTube. And all of a sudden it gets stupidly busy. It's quite a good small community of people. Um, and I've spoke to a few guys around the bank and they seem very, very like a good group. So yeah, I'm gonna, protect the fishery by not telling you but I, do you know what i'm going to do i'm going to call it the doorstep lake because it is on my doorstep and i'm going to be spending a lot of time here i can't wait to get into this one i'm only here for the day let's see what we can do so in my mix today i've got a mixture of fruit and nut boilies from parker baits i've got some sweet corn and some 10 mil fruit and nuts in there as well see if i can find there's not so many of them in there but there are some in there and it's just covered in the magic dust, because you guys know how much I like the magic dust. But look at that for a mix. And the good thing I like about this lake as well is I'm fishing over there, that's my swim over there. You're allowed to walk over the back. It very much reminds me of Willow Bank, this lake. I'm fishing two rod lengths out from the back. So I'm just gonna, I've got, I've got a marker. Don't worry, I've sorted that out. Oh, ducks are going mental, that's ideal. Just what you want. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm fishing two rod lengths out from this yellow gooseberry bush. And I'm just chucking some bait in there. I came down here last night and pre-baited. So I'm hoping there's some fish still in here after the bloody ducks have done what they've done. Well, that's it. First bit of baiting done, or second bit if you include last night. But what I would say guys, is some of you obviously will recognize this fishery. If you do know it, please, please, please don't spread it around in the comment section. I'd really appreciate that. Um, but yeah, I'm really looking forward to getting on it. I've only been fishing once this year, and that was in January. So I'm looking forward to trying to nail a carp in February. It's not so cold today as well. We've had a lot of frost early February. And this morning, um, I woke up and there was no ice on any of the car, well, on any of the cars out the front. And um, that's a good thing because it's been like minus three overnight, but overnight last night was about three or four degrees. And it's meant to get into double figures today. The sun's meant to come out. So I'm hoping that'll be enough to maybe get the fish turning a little bit. So this is my swim. The rods aren't set up yet. They're just, um, I've gone in and put that bait in. That gooseberry bush over there. That's where I stood for in the bait in. Two rod links out off the edge of that. But, uh, yeah, I don't know what to do. I don't know whether to put two rods on that or one rod and then chuck another rod, maybe in a margin or halfway out. Because this is a new lake and I've not fished here before, I'm interested to know. Um, well, I've had a little lead around. It's very, very silty, so I will be using foam. But I'd be interested to know whether more bites come off the back because you're not allowed to fish over the back or the margins or the middle. So I'm probably going to fish my left hand rod towards that gorsbury, gorsbury bush. The right hand one, I might just have a little play around with. Like I say, it reminds me very much of Willow Bank. Um, you only fish from one side. There's probably between eight and 10 swims here. So yeah, the only difference is it's not the home to Big Red. But yeah, the doorstep lake. Both rods are now out. So I better give you a little, up, a little update on what is going on. Now, the eagle-eyed amongst you will see that the helicopter's out, which means we're on a day session today. I know I've already said it but I will be spending nights on here once I get on the ticket. And also, if you're even more eagle-eyed, what's that? A brand new chair, it is. I have treated myself to a new chair. I've got some waders, it's quite shallow in here, so if I do catch a PB, I will be getting in the water with my waders on and getting some good, good shots and some good photos in the water with the fish. That's fingers crossed if we do catch any. Let me just quickly update you on my rods because I've got my left hand rod out to that spot which I showed you earlier. My right hand rod's slightly different. Um, like I say, it's a new venue, so I'm still trying to learn, still trying to get a gauge of what's going on. So I've chucked that just under halfway out to the right. 
and I've put a little mesh bag on it with a Parker Bates 14 mil fruit and nut um, and a little tiny yellow topper. Just wondering if, you know, putting, fishing over a baited spot is better than chucking out ultimately a single with a little mesh bag. So we're going to see what happens. Um, I'm playing around with it. If we get success on one more than the other, then we learn, don't we? So come on. The rods are looking good. So yeah, I don't know if you can see. Can you see that little bit of foam at my fingertip? Oh, it's going right there. That bit of foam has just popped up. That's my right hand rod. So it's just, well, it probably is about halfway, maybe just under halfway out. Um, just a little flick out there with a mesh bag on. And like I say, that left one's out towards that gooseberry bush over there. Ho, 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 it's looking good. Now it's time for a coffee. And this is not a hashtag ad, but what I would say is this um, flask from Reed Comforts is unbelievable. They haven't paid me to say this. You know what I mean? This is not, I'm giving you my opinion on it. Um, I went to work yesterday and I put some coffee in it in the morning and probably what half seven by midday it was still piping hot so yeah absolutely love it it's a really like it's not really small but it's 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 a perfect size it's really good like, i can hold it in one hand and it's probably just a little bit more than one mug and it just keeps it keeps your drinks warm for hours and ultimately in the summer i'm going to be wanting to keep my drinks cold so haven't tested the haven't tested it yet on cold but for warmth it's doing a very good job oh, now this is a new chair i mean look is it too early for a cream egg probably um i know some people have messaged me and asked me how my sort of eating plans go in or my sort of not diet but like my weight loss journey um yeah it was going really well in january and then i went on night shifts and yeah it was a bit of a struggle i was working outside it was like minus four, minus five, and I was so cold. And um, basically what happened was um, the guy that I was working with had two cheeseburgers from McDonald's. And he said, do I want one? I said, no, I'm being good. Don't want it. No problem, whatever. Um, it was a really bad night at work. And then as he opened up his his wrapper on his cheeseburger, I looked at it and I saw the cheese melted and, and the steam coming off it. And I just thought, oh, my God. I was like, go on then, I'll have that cheeseburger. So I had that cheeseburger, and ever since then, it's gone back downhill. So I was doing well, um, but do you know what? I'm at a point where I'm like, I'm more aware of how much bad stuff I eat. And even just in the month of January, I've toned down a lot of the junk food that I'm eating. Um, so it's made me more aware, and I think it's going to be a longer journey. I don't think I'm going to be Mo Farah in six months, but I think this time next year, I will weigh less than what I weigh now. Um, and yeah, it, it'll be a slow one, but I still want to be able to enjoy things like cream eggs and not feel so guilty about it. And whilst we're on the topic of updates, look what I've got. Oh, what are those? I've got my Crocs. My Crocs that I got, specifically for fishing, I've got them on. The plan was, right, what happened was, what happened was oh, do you know what, they're so comfortable. I was, um, I was putting my stuff in my car this morning and I thought, oh, I'll slip the Crocs on just because I'm going in and out of the house. And I've got my boots over there. And I brought my boots with me and I thought, when I get to the lake, I'll put them on. But do you know what? It's not overly muddy. It is a little bit muddy, but not too bad. And these have been so comfortable that I've just left them on. Beautiful. So I'm heading to 1,000 subscribers on YouTube, but I'm nearly there. Now, I just want to do a massive giveaway to say thank you to everybody. Now, for my 500 subscriber giveaway, I think I did three £100 Anglin Direct vouchers, and that was great, but only three people won. What I want to do, I want to do a massive giveaway, a super South Coast Angler giveaway. And I'm thinking like just giving away loads of things to loads of people. Now, it might not be a £100 voucher. What we could do is maybe do one £100 voucher for, for Angler Direct, one £50 voucher, one £25 voucher, um, I don't know, 24 hours on Big Haze, 24 hours on Little Haze, um, 24 hours on Wild Mill. Um, I could give away anything, bait, um, head torches, hats. Like, I just want to do a big bundle, but rather than one person win a big bundle, I might do, like, 10 
different items and you can all have a chance of winning. I don't know, it's just a thought. Because I don't want to give one person or three people sort of like a giveaway when I've got a thousand people subscribed to me. I want to give more back, so if I can make 10 people, one per hundred, that's great. I've not really done this before, but I think it's so important to get a good understanding and a gauge of what it's like to see when you're fishing in silt. I don't know if you can see the leaves and the silt down there. If you put bait in over the top, what it actually looks like. So I'm gonna chuck suck this little bit in now, just so we can see what the bait looks like when it's in the water, laying on top of the silt. And there you go. That is very surprising to me. Look at all the, that's the magic dust there. Look at it all like floating in the water above, like in the water column above where the bait is. But that is very interesting to me. I did not realize how good that looks. I thought it would be a, li a little bit more buried than that, but it's looking good. And what you can even do now is if you were super, super interested and really want to get a gauge of like what it was like under there, Next time you reel your rod in, just lay your rig over the top of it and that will show you how your, your rig and your bait is presented to the fish in the water. But you know what? That's actually not as bad as I thought. And since I've started carp fishing, I've really like got into a bit more detail about things like that just to try and get a better understanding, a better sort of knowledge of what's going on, how you're presenting your rigs to your fish. Um, at home, I've got a an old fish tank that I don't use and I fill that with water and then when I make my rigs I just basically put them with the bait on inside it so I can see how the bait sat how the line sat how the hook sits like everything so I'd like to think that when I'm going into that much detail in my rigs and my bait presentation and things like that that it's going to start improving my fishing so fingers crossed it's just a case of now picking the right rigs for the right lakes in the right situations do you know what I mean I'm starting to learn more about the rigs. I've got two real favourite sort of rigs, and that is a slip D rig and the stiff hinge rig. Um, obviously, the stiff hinge for the pop-up and then the slip D for a, a wafter or a bottom bait. But with those two rigs, for, in my eyes, for those two rigs, you can do anything with those two rigs. And you can, you can change little components on those rigs or you can do little things to them to change them to accommodate sort of size, um, different size hooks and different size baits and and different you know different substrate just as a heads up from now on i guess from now on i don't know when this video is going out but if i haven't already started uploading weekly on a sunday at five it's coming pretty much from next week or i don't know by the time this video goes out i probably will be will be doing it weekly um which is good because the weather should be warming up um i've got some big trips booked i've got actually some really exciting things look i'm looking forward to um i've got a catfish session which some of you guys might not be interested but i love catfish um when i'm fishing for carp i'm not a big fan of catfish but i like dedicating a session once a year to catfish because i just i think they're incredible incredible creatures and catching them is super super fun when you target them so there will be a catfish session coming up and that will be with my dad, my brother, my uncle. So I'm super looking forward to that. Um, I've got a bit of a social on Big Haze. That's coming up real soon. In fact, that actually might be my next video. Um, I'm also booked on to Willow Bank because I'm still in search for um, Big Red, obviously. Um, there's also a fish in there called Little Red, which I'd be super, super happy if I caught either of them, to be honest. Big Red is the one I'm after. And then I am going to Linear with one of the Parker Bates ambassadors. Again, super, super excited about that. And then even um, Tom Chunkster, I'm hoping to meet up with him. He lives quite far away, but I'm hoping to meet up with Chunkster 
If you haven't checked out Chunkster on YouTube, guys, super, super funny. Similar to me, but nothing like me. He's a big lad, goes to the gym, quite strong, bit of a unit, whereas I'm just a short, fat, well, whatever, really. But, yeah, I mean, in terms of channel, he's got relatively the same amount of subscribers as me. Just a working lad goes fishing. Also, that's another thing. I'm actually going to reduce my hours very, very slightly so that hopefully I can go fishing once a week at least um, and bring you guys more content. So here we go. This should give you a better understanding. My hook bait is in and amongst that. Can you see my rig tubing laying right across the middle of that bed of bait? My hook bait is sat at the back. My lead's in there, I've got two and a half ounce lead. Let me just show you what it's like because the lead is actually buried. I wonder if I can film this whilst doing it. So this is my right hand rod. I've got my two ounce, two and a half ounce lead on there and my D-rig on. Now if I, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm dropping it in, but I'm not dropping it in lightly. I'm dropping it in quite heavy because when you cast, it's going to go in heavy. The lead, I can't really film this for you guys, but you can see what I'm doing. The lead gets buried in under the seal and again my hook bait is there um this is why i'm using foam because the tip of my hook is going to be in the leaves but i've got that little yellow topper just popping up that parker baits pop uh, that parker baits fruit and nut uh, boily 14 mil boily and so when the fish comes along my bait is well and truly in the, in the mix and it looks very much like the other bait around it now this is my other rig i've just reeled this in to recast this but that looks so much better it's popped up okay it looks different it's odd because it stands out it's bright orange with that yellow topper again but it's sat well above like at least i'd say it's two inches off the bottom but it's clear of the silt so let's get this rod back out and that's both rods back out where I want them. I've changed the right hand one. I just felt like it was a bit clueless out there. It was doing nothing. You know when you get an instinct? I had an instinct to just not ignore. For some reason, something was telling me to get some bait in that little margin area right here and chuck that in over the top. So that's what I've done. Put some bait in there. I've gone over the top. And then the left hand one, back out, straight over there. It's nine wraps. It's not far. Let's do it. There's no real foodie bits on day sessions, guys. You know that. We got a bit of sliced malt loaf, some crisps, cheese onion crisps, and of course I got my wildlife tube. Still ain't got a sponsor yet. It's really interesting when you come to a new fishery or or, or somewhere that you don't have any information on because I've spoken to everybody that's on this lake or been around this lake now. I've spoken to the other two guys that are fishing it. Someone else has just turned up to fish it. He come over and had a chat with me. The bailiff's just been round, I've had a chat with him, and everybody tells you something different, and it's all relative to your experience, isn't it? So, the first guy came round, he told me, you wanna fish as tight as you can up against that far bank. I told him about all the snags, and the, it was hard to get in there, and all the um, silt and stuff, and he said, yeah, he said, but they, the carp like to get in under the bank. I spoke to the bailiff, and the bailiff said, yeah, they can do, but they're not always there, and you're like, well, you don't know what to believe, do you know what I mean? So it's like, you have to have your own experience. I'm guessing that guy has done well fishing against that bank. Um, whereas the bailiff comes here every day and walks around every day and he sort of knows where the fish are, I guess. So if I go and catch one on that right-hand margin, I will tell the next person that's a, that's a hot spot. Or not maybe a hot spot, but that's a spot that I know has produced me something good. So it's all relative to people's experience, isn't it? So when people tell you what to do, how to fish, where to present a bait, you can't take all that information as factual because it's just different on different days different people different experiences and it's just i mean that's the beauty of fishing if they were always in one spot always being caught in the same spot on the same bait everyone would just come down do the same thing and catch all the fish and it would be boring but having that where do i go what do i do what do i use what you know all that sort of all these questions all these little things that make up how your session goes 
that's what keeps us coming back. That's what keeps us fishing. And, 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 and ju it's just, even things like weather conditions and months and times of year, night, darkness, moon, sun, ice, anything can change the way in which you need to fish to catch the fish. You know, there's a slight wind now on the lake. There wasn't that this morning, so that might push them down or they might end up being on the back of the wind. You don't know, you, you really don't know. But what I will say is, since I've been here, a good few hours now, I've not had a sniff and I've not seen one sign of a fish. I've not seen a swirl, I've not seen a splash, I've not seen any movement, I've, I've not seen any sign of fish whatsoever. So, I'm not feeling too positive about this one. I mean, you have to, I suppose. Whilst you've got a rig in the water, you have to feel like you've got a chance. I do feel like I've got a chance, but I wouldn't be surprised if I walked away from here empty-handed. I don't like saying that, but I feel like that's what I'm up against today. Well, the fishing has not exactly been prolific, and I must apologise, guys, that there's not much content in this video, but when the fishing's slow like this, I just don't know what else to film. I'm going to give it a few more hours. Um, I could stay till dark, but if it's just dead as a dodo, I mean, I've got to get back and edit some videos anyway. I'm just going to keep plugging away, give it a few more hours, and hopefully we can entice something. I mean, I'm all out of ideas. Which is a pretty crazy thing to say when it's the first time I've been at this lake, but I've not seen anything I've not heard anything I've not it's just there's nothing there's absolutely nothing it's just I don't know and also look at this bait I threw in so that's been there for oh, how many hours has that been there for now a good few hours and like, you can see obviously where the sweet corn is and there's a few bits of pellet and maybe a couple of 10 millers, but it doesn't look like there's as much as there was when I first put it in. Nothing's been eaten that, so it must have just slowly found its way underneath the sill. Oh, and quickly just talking about upgrades. I know I mentioned that I'd upgraded my, uh, my chair here which is really comfortable i don't like the i'm not a big fan of chairs with the arms i don't know why just out with that freedom of of arm movement i guess um i've got a new ruck bag so i did have the esp one but i didn't like how it opens at the top so you have to pull everything out to get to the bottom but on this one you've got the zip so you can open it up and everything's there but yeah highly would highly recommend this sonic ruck bag Awesome bit of kit. It looks awesome as well, the camo. Well, it has been very, very difficult here today. Incredibly difficult. I've got to analyze what I've learned from today. I need to store the information and I need to come back and hit it again because I will do um, the doorstep lake I'm going to be fishing this lake I know I said it before I'm going to be fishing I'm going to be putting a lot of hours into this lake I feel like it can be rewarding but I just need to get a bit more knowledge about it understand it a bit better but it's hard to do that when I haven't even seen one sign of fish I haven't seen one like as far as I'm aware there's no fish in it <laughs> um, Honestly, I haven't seen absolute, I haven't seen a thing. But I've learned where the deeper areas are. I've learned where the silty areas are. I've, I've been told where the pads grow in the summer. I'm not quite aware of that. I've got a lot of that to learn. Um, I've learned, well, I've, I've taken the information that people have told me about where the fish like to hide, where they hang out, where the bigger fish get caught from, what end of the lake produces since again like i said it's all relative to people's experience um, and when people tell you information like that it's all down to their experience so i'm only going to learn by hitting this lake more often putting more hours into it and doing more sessions on it 
So I'm sorry that this is another blank. My fishing has been very, very tough over the winter. I'm hoping that in the next video, a like big haze, I can maybe change that. Um, and now we're doing weekly videos. There's gonna be content coming out every week. So make sure you like, please subscribe down below. I'm not just gonna end this video just yet, but I am slowly gonna start packing away. And um, also follow me on Instagram and TikTok. I never ask you guys to do that. I never really ask you guys for a lot. So yeah, go and follow me on Instagram and TikTok. I'd really appreciate that. Um, there's always content going up on there. Um, and also quite a few giveaways. Like I said, I've got that 1,000 sub giveaway coming up. Um, so yeah, that's something to look forward to. Like I said, I've got plenty of, of trips coming up that I've, got, that I've got to look forward to. And yeah, I don't know. This like, this like stumped me a little bit. But we're not giving up on it at all. Well, it is literally the last knockings now. I'm packing away. Net's still out. That will be the next to be packed away. But um, yeah, tough day. And I always want to bring you guys great videos with lots of fish, but I can't always do that. I'm just being true to myself. I'm being true to you. And I will put up videos when I do blank. I will put up videos when I don't catch any fish. That's just the way it is. Some days I'll have good sessions. Some days I won't. Like I said, this winter has not been a great winter for me. Hopefully, the next couple of videos are going to be awesome. I'm hoping I can bring you some awesome videos and some brilliant fish. And I'm really excited for Topper next weekend. Thanks for watching this one, and I'll see you in the next one. Please like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.